Hi, this is Colin Rennie here. Welcome to another video on Rhino introductions, and this time we're going to be doing uh, contouring but using Grasshopper um, to give you guys a little bit more control of the um, spacing and the methods of contouring. You, you can use Grasshopper as a, as, a, as a tool to parametrically adjust both the direction of the contour and the spacing of the contour very, very easily. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is call Grasshopper. There it is. Um, and here we have it. And uh, well, the first thing I'll do is to reference in this geometry here. So I need uh, to put that into a uh, holder. Geometry, there we go. The geometry will do, or you could put in a surface, or you could put in anything. I'll just use geometry for now because it works. And I'll do set one geometry here. And we'll choose this geometry here. I'll hide the Rhino version, so we're only looking at the Grasshopper version. And we need to contour this one. So I'll call contour, not counter, contour. Contour, there we go, spelling is good. There we go, contour. Right, so contour, um, you've got two types of contour, by the way, I'll show you that. Um, contouring, you can contour a curve, or a set of curves, or you can contour a breadth or a mesh. Um, and we want to contour a breadth, so, because this is a breadth. So we're going to use this one, it's going to get one output on the right hand side. So I'm going to put the geometry into the S, where that goes. The next thing it's looking for is a point, a base point. Now I've got a point in Rhino set up here, there's a point down here. Um, and um, you could put that point pretty much anywhere you wanted to uh, around the space, but that is going to be the origin of your vector, that's the zero, zero of your vector, zero, zero, zero of your vector. So um, I will we'll put this in, we'll reference this in as a point, and I'll set one point here. Uh, down here, so one point, and that's set, and that can go into the P. Um, the N is the direction, okay? Contour normal direction. So in the last video I showed you that the, the, the contouring direction is the normal of the plane that the contour passes through. So the, the intersection between the contouring plane and the perimeter of your brep is the contour itself. So the normal of that plane is the direction of the contouring. Okay, so that's the vector direction, and the uh, the normal here is that. So we could set that up if we if we carried on from where we were before as a unit z. And we could just plug that straight in because we're just going straight up in the z. And the distance we give the distance a value. So we need to give this uh, a value. And last time we had five as a value. Uh, I can put in five here. And we can just plug that in, and then we'll have exactly the same thing that we had before. I'll just preview this off so we don't need to look at it. And uh, I'll click away there, and I'll preview this point off so we don't need to look at that. And I'll also hide this so we're only looking at the actual contour itself. However, that, that, that gives you some control. We can change the, the amount, change this to a uh, real number. Um, so we can change the distance of the contouring. We can effectively change the the smaller they are, the, the higher the definition of the of the contour. Don't don't set this down to zero. You'll get an error. Um, I'll try it. I'll get an error when you put it to zero. Then uh, the smaller that number is, the harder the machine has to work. Uh, so it can cause problems and it can get into. It. You see, my one's starting to crash there, and I've managed to crash Grasshopper. Fantastic. Um, and that's okay. I'll just escape that. Oh, brilliant. There we go. It's back to normal. Right. Um, so it's sensible to, to not put this too small because then you'll ask Rhino to do far too much um, calculations. So what you can do is set your minimum to say 1 here and agree to that. So you can't go less than 1 um, and and that means you you won't be crashing Rhino all the time when you try and do it. So that's a, just a little tip for you. Um, so we'll see, we'll set this to you can also You can set the number if you want uh, just by changing that to 5 where we were before and that's set to 5, exactly where we were in the last video. Um, the um, changes that we can make to this, apart from the, the actual distance between the contours, is the direction itself. So we've got the, the vector normal being the z vector here, but we could construct a, a vector, I'm actually in here, I could construct a vector x, y, z, um, and we could actually make our own vector here. So we can use this z value, I'll just move it down here, um, move it down here, and then we also want uh, an x, an x, and we need a y. So I'll put those in the right order. Conventional to go x, y, z, or x, y, z, as we say in the UK. Okay, so there's my x, there's my y, there's my z. Now these these will be set to ten at the moment. So that will give me a um, oh, it's one rather because I've got one, one, one. Okay. And I can plug that into the end here. 
and you'll see that the, the direction of the vector will change. Uh, that's not completely parametric at the moment, I'll put this ending here as well. Um, but we can change that by giving it some number sliders, we'll change those to real numbers, and I'll make a couple of copies of those, like that, drop these down, and then we can plug those in, such as that. Okay, so oops. So parametrically, my computer is running a little bit slow today. There we go. That's fine. Um, once we've done that, though, we can do other other interesting things to the. Um, to the object, we, what we're looking at here is basically just the contour, but we might want to actually see what this would look like once we'd cut it out of the material of the chosen thickness to, to, to look at the resolution that we're working with. So we could extrude these uh, curves, um, so let's call the extrude, this is extrude here, and the extrude is after, extrude is after a base profile curve, well these are the contour curves that we're putting in, so we can plug those into there, and then the direction is as the direction vector. Now the direction vector is a com is a combination of this distance and this direction. So we need to actually put in an amplitude here, an amplitude vector, which will allow us to combine those two to make. So we need the vector to go in here, the amplitude to go in here, and then the v can go into the d. And that will then allow us to see what these look like. Um, when we do that though, we will only have um, the edges because we're extruding just those. So if we actually want to look, see what this would look like as a solid, we would need to cap these solids. So we'll cap holes and then put in all these edges into there and that will cap all of those holes. And it will give me a rendition or, uh, of the object at the particular uh, resolution that I'm working with. So if I take this down here, you'll see that the resolution will increase as the thickness decreases and you'll have a more sophisticated object at the end of it, so you can see what it looks like. Um, we can bake this out um, into Rhino, which will allow us to see it much more clearly. And what we will have when we when we do that is we'll have individual, I'll just ungroup that, um, you will have individual surfaces. Um, that, no, sorry, sorry, they're solids, they're closed poly surfaces um, when you do that. So that is a, a pretty quick way of um, allowing you to see what your, uh, what your contouring will look like. Um, one, process, programs like 1, 2, 3, you make will do this for you pretty automatically um, and allow you to lay these things out as well. Um, and it, you can do that. It's a perfectly viable way of doing it. I'm showing you how to do this in, um, in Grasshopper because you might want to plug this into another definition that you're working on or you might have a model in Rhino that you want to work more um, explicitly with further in Grasshopper or in Rhino in order to in order to change it or put it back into Rhino and do things like cut a hole through it for example that kind of stuff so um, you know there's lots of ways of doing this this is just one method um, you need to experiment and try out different programs to see what what suits you um, Rhino is obviously not a free piece of software it was one to three to make is which means it has its its benefits, but um, you know they all do different things. Anyway, that's a little bit on contouring using Grasshopper. Um, simple, um, very small definition. It's not fast at all. It's a good little introduction. It allows you to see the difference between amplitude here um, and uh, the vectors and how they operate. Um, so yeah, I didn't show you that you can actually, if you change these, you'll obviously change the direction that you're contouring. That's something you can do in 123D Make on the fly pretty easily. Um, so uh, it's uh, very similar to what we've got here. Um, there. Okay. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll probably see you in the next one. Thanks so much.